Hi there, Mouseketeers. Welcome to the Disneyland beat where our toes tap to a Disneyland drum. And we always whistle while we work. Season's greetings, Mouseketeers. Welcome. We have headlines from December heading into 2022. We talk magic keys, lightning lane, trams, and tips you're going to want to know for next year's trip. We have the bad news. There's a bunch of ride closures in January you're going to want to know about, but... We also bring good news, like Paradise Bay is reopening its shows. The Disney hacker takes us into the park to show us what's going on with construction and impending refurbishments. And we wrap up the holidays at Disneyland. Come on into the parks with us. Like, subscribe, and stick around. Disneyland is your land. <laughs> Come seek an adventure at the old pirates, eh? Make the jump to life, please. Well, Genie Plus and Lightning Lane has started. You know, it was a pretty cool egalitarian period at the parks without any fast pass or Lightning Lane, but it's over. The jump to the front of the line services are in effect. The app has a new page called the Tip Board where you can make Genie Plus and Lightning Lane purchases and it's pretty efficient and easy to navigate. Genie Plus, which costs $20, works very much like FastPass did. So far, reservations have been fairly easy to make, but more popular rides do have later return times and can sell out earlier. The three attractions that cost extra on Lightning Lane have also been available within an hour or two of the current time, though on busy days they can sell out before the day's over. Rise of the Resistance debuted at a whopping $18, and Web Slingers and Radiator Springs Racers has been as little as $7 a pop on slower days and up to that maximum $18 on busy ones. The other new element here is when there's a problem with a reservation, so let's say a ride you paid for goes down for the day, Disney now has to issue refunds. Many people had to spend a lot of time in line with customer service on the first day and still do occasionally as bugs get worked out, but overall Genie Plus and Light Lightning Lane are in place and fully operational. The trams are coming back. Some of the parking lot trams will be returning by February of next year, though not the entire fleet. So yes, it's nice that they're coming back, but the lines and the waits will probably be fairly long for a while yet. We suppose that's better than nothing, and now there is, of course, the nice footpath. If you have a magic key, then make sure you double check the reservation calendar. Dates have been refreshed through March of 2022, so make sure you get the bookings that you want. December was unprecedented at Disneyland, with the park being sold out well in advance, both for key holders and for regular tickets. One thing that we found confusing about that is it seems like despite the fact that the park has been quote unquote sold out every day in December, crowd levels still seem to fluctuate drastically from day to day. One tip we have for key holders is that reservations for the next day often seem to become available the evening before. So if you're wanting to visit the park on a whim, you can have good luck checking the reservation calendar in that 6 to 8 p.m. window the day before. You never know, you might luck out. In downtown Disney news, a new store has opened called Love Pop. It has 3D cards and other 3D paper art that's really fun and impressive, good gifts. Laser printers and cutters are really amazing things, and they're put together by hand. It's all a really nice addition to the district. And the last headline from this month is really a lesson. A man recently got conned out of $600 purchasing phony Disneyland tickets from a third-party site. He found out at the gate when the tickets wouldn't scan, and that really stinks for him. Be wary. You can save a few dollars from third-party websites, but make sure they're reputable before you buy. As we look forward to the new year, there's a lot to anticipate and a lot coming back to the parks. It's going to bring about the return of classic parades and nighttime spectaculars, as well as theater shows coming back to both parks, which we've detailed in recent videos. Okay, so for our really good news, in a story broken by Dave Erickson of Fresh Bake, there is a leaked schematic showing fireworks positions for a New Year's Eve celebration this year at DCA's Paradise Bay. It's likely that World of Color with a fireworks add-on will be part of the New Year's Eve celebration for 2021, which would be a really wonderful surprise. In the diagram, it shows upper and lower fireworks banks, and there's been some speculation that they might be a permanent addition to the show. But that all remains to be seen. Fireworks have been used at DCA in the past, and they haven't stuck around. Currently at Disneyland, every attraction with the exception of Tarzan's Treehouse and Finding Nemo Submarine Voyage is up and running. Interestingly, it seems like Disneyland has been experiencing more breakdowns than usual as the crowds have returned in larger numbers. There have been, quote, a few well-publicized breakdowns, Overall, we assume this is due to staffing and part shortages. And now for the not so great news. If you've got a trip coming up, looking forward to the January calendar, there are a ton of scheduled ride closures coming up. 
Whatever's going on at Tarzan's Treehouse must be significant because its closure is going to continue to get extended. It's not going to reopen for the entire month. And the Finding Nemo submarine voyage and the sailing ship Columbia are scheduled to stay closed through all of January as well. The day after the holidays end, January 10th, Haunted Mansion Holiday will close for about 10 days to get changed back into the traditional attraction. The Little Mermaid Ariel's Undersea Adventures will also close for a few days at that time as well, and Splash Mountain is also closing on the 10th for the rest of the month to undergo regular maintenance. It's been over a year since the announcement, but there haven't been a lot of updates about what is going on with Splash Mountain, but we do think Disney is still moving forward with the Princess and the Frog re-theme. There have been reports of Imagineers in the park looking at the Briar Patch retail shop, which is expected to get a re-theme along with the new ride. Later in the month on the 24th, Grizzly River Run will close for its annual maintenance along with It's a Small World Holiday, which will close to get changed back to its usual self. The Disneyland monorail will also close on the 24th for the rest of the month. And finally, the Inside Out Emotional Whirlwind will close on the 24th for regular maintenance just for a couple of weeks. So it's really great that everything is up and running right now, but just be aware if you're visiting in January, there's a lot of rides that are gonna close. And this is not an unexpected thing. It is the off season and Disney is prepping for a big spring and summer in 2022. But still a lot of rides down. There's also a great deal of exciting construction going on in the parks right now, as well as a cool new surprise special offer in Toontown. And our on-scene reporter is going to take us into Disneyland to tell us all about it. Damien, how's it going in the parks? Hey there, Disneyland Beat. Hey there, Mouseketeers. This is Damien, the Disney hacker here. And today I'm going to give you guys an update during our holiday season here at the Disneyland Resort. With that being said, folks, let's go. Because here is our first update of the day. As you guys might not already know, the World of Color Show is scheduled to be back here at DCA sometime early in 2022. But hey folks, I am very optimistic that we might see some kind of show on New Year's Eve. So we are over here in Mickey's Toontown where as you can see the construction of Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway is well on the way. Cannot wait for this construction to be complete so you can experience this fun magical adventure. Perhaps the biggest news so far in this holiday season is of course behind me is that you can have a party in Mickey's house for 90 minutes which is incredible. Wow that should be really fun. You can have arts and crafts and you have cake and ice cream and things like that and hey you even get early access to Gadgets Gold Coaster, which is right next door. I hope you enjoyed this update like I did. Feel free to check out my channel, The Disney Hacker, to help you get your Disneyland fix. And hey folks, I am doing a special series on the Disney Genie service and the Disney Genie Plus. Now back to you guys, Disneyland Beats, and Happy New Year. Thank you so much, Damien. That all sounds wonderful. And hey, we can't wait to see you New Year's Eve. There's a lot more to look forward to in 2022. Disney has announced dates for the returning Lunar New Year event celebrating Chinese, Korean, and Vietnamese cultures and traditions, which will run on January 21st through February 13th. Sweethearts Night, the first of three separate admission after hours events announced for 2022, will run on February 1st, 3rd, 8th, 10th, and 14th at Disneyland. Disney is going all out on after hours events this coming year. Villains Night, the second batch of the separate admission after hours parties will take place on March 8th and 10th at Disney California Adventure. Star Wars Night, the third of the separate admission after hours parties will run on May 3rd, 4th, and 27th at Disneyland. The first pair of dates fall on the eve and the day of the unofficial commemorative date celebrating the Star Wars franchise, as in May the 4th, be with you. Disney has also announced dates for another returning seasonal event, the DCA Food and Wine Festival, featuring local celebrity and Disney chefs. It's gonna run March 4th all the way through April 26th. And finally, we wanted to remind folks that the D23 Expo Fan Convention, also planned for the Anaheim Convention Center, will be held September 9th through 11th. When you combine this with the news that we already have, that World of Color, Fantasmic, Disneyland Forever fireworks, and more like the Main Street Electrical Parade are coming back, we really have a lot to look forward to in 2022. It is important to consider where we are now and where we were a year ago. Though it's been stressful at times, Disneyland has been a blessing to a lot of people who needed an escape in difficult times this year. We are extremely grateful to the cast members for making that happen, for putting yourselves in danger for such a simple thing to bring joy into people's lives. And finally, we want to say thank you to all of our viewers. We are so incredibly grateful to all of you for all of your generous and incredible support as we've explored Disneyland together this year. 
Your comments and the conversations we've had, they're so welcome, and it's created a really wonderful community on the channel, and we just can't thank you enough. Thanks for sharing our dreams with us. See you real soon, Mouseketeers. See you real soon. Oh, oh.